Hey there, Dr. Mark here. There is no more polarizing topic in the world of nutrition than injectable weight loss medications. There has been rapid movement in the research and development of these drugs, and the results are very impressive, making many people, including doctors and even the weight loss industry itself, take notice and some even going as far as shifting their entire business models. Today, I'll explain how these weight loss drugs work and most importantly, how this will impact nutrition coaches who long have been champions of weight loss the natural way. I'll make sure to provide some practical takeaways and my overall thoughts on how this will impact the nutrition coaching industry at the end of this video, so make sure to stick around for that. But for now, these medications will impact your coaching, your clients, and even your business, so listen up. If you're a fitness professional or a nutrition coach watching this and you're thinking, isn't medicating everyone with obesity kind of giving up on exercise and diet? You're not alone, and there's many people that think like that. So I'm even saying it out loud, although I think this was said to get some sort of a reaction. But there's much more to this situation than just personal responsibility and working hard. Even if that's the way you help people lose weight. Let's go through the science of how these weight loss medications work. As a nutrition coach, you're probably familiar with the hormones that regulate your appetite. One of these hormones is glucagon-like peptide 1 or GLP-1, and it's naturally produced in your body after eating. What it does is works with your brain and your digestive system to slow down the rate at which food moves through your gut. And this new class of drugs for type 2 diabetes and obesity act as GLP-1 agonists, meaning they mimic the hormone through the same mechanism of action. So they stimulate GLP-1's actions to slow the emptying of the stomach, increase feeling of fullness, secrete insulin to regulate blood sugar, and inhibit glucagon, which is going to have the opposite effect on blood sugar. Ultimately, what this does is increases the feeling of fullness on smaller amounts of food and may even reduce cravings, which may surprise you because on social media, this is being described as this weight loss drug that you take that's almost like a miracle and you can eat whatever you want and still lose weight. And that's not the case, so let's keep learning. Now, there are several different drugs out there for this. Some you may know as they're more popular than others. One of my clients actually said that since he hears so much about these drugs, he actually knows one of the jingles. Oh, Ozempic, you know. Sad? Funny, maybe both. The singing is great though. The first drug is semaglutide, which is sold as Wagovi and Ozempic. These are the same drugs, just at different doses. Wagovi was approved by the FDA for the treatment of obesity in 2021. It's taken as a once per week injection along with a reduced calorie diet. Now the other drug, Ozempic, is approved for the treatment of type 2 diabetes, but is currently being prescribed off-label for obesity. Off-label means that a physician believes that this drug will help the patient in a way that it's not intended, but it still can be used and it's completely legal. This is similar to a new drug, Monjar, which is shown to be even more effective than semaglutide, which I'm going to touch on in a second. Monjarno might be even more effective because it acts as a GLP-1 agonist as well, as well as the glucose-dependent and synolytropic polypeptide, or GIP, sometimes known as the gastric inhibitory polypeptide. And this added effect might be responsible for its additional effectiveness. Speaking of effectiveness, how well do these work? Well, Wagovi has been shown to help people lose up to 15% of their body weight. And at higher doses, Monjarno might be able to induce a weight loss up to 21% of body weight. This impact is close to what bariatric surgery can do, which has long been thought to be the most effective at around 25 to 30% body weight loss. These are big and successful numbers and the weight loss industry is taking notice. Weight Watchers, which is now known as WW International, recently purchased a company called Sequence, which is a telehealth company that connects patients with doctors who can prescribe these drugs, which may have you thinking, can't people just do weight loss the old fashioned way with Weight Watchers points? Of course, but this sort of movement should have you thinking about the effectiveness of these drugs. Let's dig a little bit deeper into the weight loss options as well as how weight loss actually occurs. So regardless if we're talking about any of these methods, diet and exercise, weight loss surgery like bariatric surgery, or even these weight loss drugs, every method is going to work on the same principle, which is a calorie deficit. In diet and exercise, you're monitoring what energy comes in, as well as burning energy through exercise and doing movements that supports retaining muscle mass. In bariatric surgery, you're limiting the amount of energy that comes in. With these new weight loss medications, as previously discussed, they limit the total amount of energy that you want to eat. And these all will work through changing the energy balance. To lose weight, you need to be in a calorie deficit. That's just weight loss 101. When we compare all of these methods, the evidence suggests that these drugs are crushing everything else. Here are the results from one big study called the Surmount trial on doses of 5, 10, or 15 milligrams of terzepatide, which is the actual drug name of Manjaro. In this study, all patients received this in addition to a lifestyle intervention, which included regular lifestyle counseling 
counseling sessions with the intent to get the participants to eat healthy, balanced meals and stick to a calorie deficit of 500 calories per day, as well as doing 150 minutes of total exercise per week. What were the results? So over 72 weeks, which is just short of a year and a half, here's what the study found. At the five milligram dose, there was 15% body weight loss. At 10 milligrams, there was 19.5%. And at 15 milligrams, nearly 21% body weight loss over the 72 week period, compared to a placebo at 3.1% body weight loss. I know many nutrition coaches on Instagram wanted to know how this compared to regular diet and exercise. So the placebo group in this randomized controlled trial does shed some light on that. Now these results don't compare to bariatric surgery, which is closer to 25 to 30% body weight loss on average. But you need to consider that only 1% of people that actually consider this surgery follow through with it. Now you may be wondering, what does this mean for me as a nutrition coach? Nutrition coaches aren't gonna be prescribing this stuff obviously. So it's not like a supplement where you can just tell your clients to go get it. And if you're fearful that all of a sudden everyone's going to be taking it and you're going to be out of work, don't be. This isn't going to work like that. And despite feeling like this might be the ultimate quick fix, it isn't going to be. But we'll talk more about that later. But for now, think about it like this. These drugs work by decreasing someone's appetite and keeping them full. They still need to learn how to eat properly and apply weight loss fundamentals to be successful. They still need you. And the most successful nutrition coaches are gonna be the ones that can navigate these medication conversations with clients and their physicians prescribing it so they can be the best support for their clients and their results. That's the future of this stuff. And this stuff won't be for everyone, both from a side effect perspective as well as adherence. So most of the side effects to this stuff are gonna be gastric in nature, like diarrhea, nausea, and even some constipation. Although there are some more rare side effects like pancreatitis or gallbladder disease. But this also isn't some sort of quick fix, jumpstart weight loss type of drug. Obesity is a chronic disease, which means when treating it, whatever you do, you're gonna need to stick to long-term. So someone who is taking these meds is going to have to be taking them indefinitely, even after the weight is lost, which means that they need to be comfortable taking an injection long-term. So that's a lot to manage. Plus, we haven't even talked about cost yet. Some of these drugs will cost anywhere between $75 to $100 per month, upwards to $10,000 per year. You have to consider all of that so it won't be for everyone as well as a decision to take lightly. When should people consider taking these medications? Should it be the last course of action after they've tried other methods like food tracking and resistance training? Here's how you need to view this. The way we need to view these drugs is as an alternative. Although we continually learn more about obesity and how it's caused by a long-term energy imbalance, which can be controlled by diet and exercise, this isn't a simple process. And there is genetics at play for some individuals and issues with appetite regulation for others. Diet and exercise doesn't work for everyone the same way. And for that, these medications can be another tool that people can use to improve health outcomes. And if you're in the business of approving that, this will be something you need to consider. The bottom line is this type of approach isn't going away. And there are more drugs that are being researched that are going to impact appetite, as well as improving metabolic rate, where nutrients are stored, and even retaining muscle mass. These drugs will become better and even more common. As a nutrition coach, it's going to be your job to stay on top of these drugs. And the six Successful coaches will learn to work with them, not against them. Now, as great as all these tips are, if you're really serious about starting a nutrition coaching business, the next thing we'll have you do is check out this video I've linked up right here. Today, we learned about the science of weight loss drugs. Let's stick with that topic and learn about the science of new diets like the carnivore diet and the paleo diet and even the keto diet. So make sure to check it out now and I'll see you in the next video.